Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled LT Spy Simulation of a Spark Gap Surge Arrester and Voltage Surge Generator. In this presentation, I'm going to show the a development of a simple and intuitive LT Spice models for a spark gap surge arrester and also a voltage surge generator per the IEC standards like the IEC 61000-4-5. So what is a spark gap surge arrester? It's a gas field unit. There are two electrodes here. These are the surfaces of the electrode. Here is the gap. Uh, the two wires actually are connected here. The whole thing here is the connection for the conduction. And then we have some surface coating for enhancing the arc development, as well as the ignition by some material, uh, which is the ignition aid, as they call it. The popular gases which are used in units like this are neon and argon, which are then used for sparking and generating an arc between the electrode due to breakdown, depending, of course, on the distance that you have and the pressure. The units are coming in various packages, and I'm showing only a very small part of all the selection available. This is the EPCOS devices. This is also from TDK. TDK uh, actually owns now EPCOS. Now, you can actually build a homemade uh, spark gap by just two wires, and the distance of this gap will determine the breakdown voltage in air. And of course, this is not as stable and reliable and long-lasting as you might have in a unit which is a professional unit uh, marketed by a number of companies, including TDK, and there are some others. Now, here is a general description how a unit like this works. Here is the spark gap. I've put here a resistor to limit the current and then as the voltage across the unit here V in goes up, at a given point we have a breakdown. The first thing to happen is that we have ionization of the gas which causes a glow, pretty much like a small neon lamp you might say. So this glow has a ionized molecules but the conduction is fairly low, so the current is limited, but as the voltage goes up, the current increases, and at one point it actually flashes over and we get an arc within the gap. Then, of course, the current is uh, can go up very high because the voltage of the unit with an arc is something of the order of uh, 20 Volt. This is like a voltage source, it's a constant voltage, although it depends somewhat on the current temperature, but it's basically a voltage drop, and then of course the current can go very high, and units like this are built for very high current in the uh, kiloamp range, okay? So we have a breakdown, the voltage across the unit goes down to the glow level, and then it goes up again as the voltage continues to rise. And as we reach a certain current within the ionized gas, it'll break down to a arc, and this will be the operation of the unit. Now, as it turns out, the spark gaps are sensitive to the rate of voltage rise across them. Here is well called DC, which is a small low rate of rise, 100 volt per second, so the voltage goes up very slowly, and then you have a certain breakdown. Okay, here it's 200 something. While if the rate of rise of the voltage is higher, like 100 volt per second, the breakdown goes higher, and when it is even higher than, say, one kilovolt per microsecond, which is fairly fast, then you have substantial increase in the breakdown voltage. So this is something to take into account if you are expecting a high DVDT of the signal coming to the unit. Now this behavior is shown here in a graphical way. Here we see two lines which are the sort of the tolerance of a given unit. 
maximum value, a minimum value that you'd expect under low DVDT, say 100 volt per second. As you go up with the DVDT volt per second, then you see that the level of breakdown goes up and 100 volt per microsecond it's like this and then 10 kilovolt per microsecond which is a very very fast of course you see it goes up substantially so this is something to take into account again in cases uh, you might encounter fast DVDT. spark gaps are using in many application for example for generating a very high current spike for ignition of say a high intensity discharge lamp uh, for uh, pulse generation and many other application but i guess the most common use is as a surge protector voltage surge protector and here is just an example that tdk is showing this is just a generic circuit it, uh, some details are missing here but the idea here is clear this is like a communication line suppose it's on the roof or somewhere that has to be protected against lightning or some other discharges and then uh, we have at the front end we have the spark gap so this is the will capture the very high voltages that might be arriving here and then we have varistors these are resistors forming a voltage divider and limiting the current to the varistor so you end up with a voltage which is safe for this uh, receiver that will be at this end. So this is a very typical application and of course the circuitry can be in various form. Now I'm turning to the standard. I'm showing here the part of the IC 61000-4-5. This is for electromagnetic compatibility and this part is testing and measurement techniques for surge immunity test. So this is how to test unit for surge immunity. This is the purpose of this uh, part here. And they are classifying the environment uh, for the unit to be protected and then tested as like class zero, which is in a well-protected uh, environment, like an inner room, which has uh, very little electricity, cabling, and etc. And then it goes up to uh, a very harsh environment like uh, outside outdoor on the roof when it can be exposed to lightning and some other discharge and the units have to uh, withstand higher and higher voltage and here we have some of uh, the classes here actually this is like starting with 0.5 kilovolt maximum current of 250 amp and then it goes up to 4 kilowatt in to kiloamp, quite a heavy current and very high voltage. However, these are not continuous voltages, of course. We are talking about pulses that are defined in this standard, okay? So, first of all, they also are showing how to generate the pulses. And here is a, like a circuit that you can build and to build the tester and you can actually buy testers like this and it includes like a network here a shaping network this is the primary source a capacitor with this charged and then as the switch is uh, connected turned on we have the pulse generated here and this is just for recharging the capacitor this is a very large resistor so after you have the pulse and then uh, the switch is opened again, then this resistor will charge the capacitor to the nominal value, and then you can go on closing the switch again for the pulse. Now the pulses are well defined. This is the open circuit voltage pulse, okay? This is a normalized value, one. It has a front end and a trailing edge here, which are defined by the rise time here it's a little bit complicated i'll show it but let me just say first of all that they are specified as 1.5 to 50 microsecond this is for this particular standard other standard will have different number the 1.2 refers to the front between half the height on both sides so this is the width defined as the width of the pulse now, as far as the rising part, 
It's a bit complicated. Well, this was uh, composed by a committee, and of course they had to complicate it. So there are two numbers here. First of all, 0.3 or 30 percent and 90 percent of the final value, and there is a time here between these two points, and then you normalize it to the full time, like as if it was a straight line, and it turns out that this normalization is 1.67, you have to multiply it. So basically what it says is that you have to have here like 0.718 uh, microsecond, so that the total time here will be approximately 1.2 microsecond. And this is for the short circuit, this is now the current, that is expected uh, for the short circuit if the output is shorted. And again, there is a definition of, of this rise time and the width here. And we are talking about, uh, in this case, 8 to 20 microseconds. So the, the average, you might say, of rise time here is 8 microseconds and the width is 20 microseconds. So now I'm turning to the SPICE models and I'm starting with the spark gap model. Now the model is basically a switch. Now this switch has to turn on at a given voltage and to turn off when the current drops to a certain level, okay? This is the requirement of this switch. Once it's on, we see here like a voltage source and here I put 20 volt, just an average value. And here is just a parasitic resistance, you might say, or actually the resistance of the arc, uh, which I just put uh, 10 milliohm. This is, of course, just an approximation, but it's not that important because uh, the question what is exactly the voltage here is not of importance in actual simulation of a system. And now I have here behavioral dependent source, which are generating the input to this trigger, okay? It will trigger at about 0.5 volt, here it is, 0.5 volt, it will trigger. And so what I have to do is to look at the output and when it get, gets to whatever voltage uh, is this uh, spark gap defined to or specified to, I have to uh, generate the voltage here, okay, here to the input. And then I have to keep it on until the current drops to a certain value, and this is the second source here. So this source generates a high voltage, I mean, relatively high voltage, when the current is above a certain value. Now, I'm using here a logic syntax of LTSPICE. Now, this if statement means the following. If x, y, z, meaning that if x is larger than 0.5, that's what it is, then y, otherwise z. So what it says here is the following. If v out over 750 is 0.5, larger than 0.5, then this would be a 1, and this will be turning on the switch and otherwise it's zero. And now for the current, I have it here like, if the current is larger than 0.5 amp, then it is a one, so it's holding this switch on. And if it drops be below 0.5, then it will be zero, okay? So this will turn on and keep it on until the current drops below 0.5 amp. This is the way I've specified it. Of course, this can be changed. Now I've added another thing here, which is an indication of the DVDT, the rate of rise of the voltage coming in to the spark gap. Now this is using the derivative operator of LTSPICE, but I've also added the max and min here to get rid of spikes which are high and voltages which are smaller than zero because I don't want to uh, sort of mess up the picture. So what it says here is that it will show the voltage, the higher between these two. So it's only positive voltages. And then it will be the minimum of 10 and this, meaning that it will chop whatever is above 10 volts. So when I'm running it and I'm looking at the scope at the output of LT spice, it will not mess up the 
plots with very high spikes and changing the scale, etc. Okay, so this is just uh, some cosmetics on the pulses, but basically it is a derivative of the voltage coming in. So now, here is an example. As I've said, we have about 400 volt, 375 volt is the threshold, and we have 0.5 amp as a turn off uh, current. And here I've changed this uh, part here to be a larger resistor. And the reason is that I like to uh, see the fine details. And if it is like uh, just a voltage source, this, the, the operation, the spikes are very short and it's very difficult to understand what's going on. So this is just for this stage of examination. And then I have here a voltage source, which is a pulse source going to a, about a thousand volt. There is a delay here, so I can uh, start uh, looking at it after 100 microseconds, rise and fall time of 100 microseconds, and the pulse width is uh, 50 microseconds. Okay, so this is just pulsing uh, this thing here. And I have here a resistor to limit the current, so I can see a drop in the voltage, okay? So here it is. This is the shape of the current that I've programmed, okay? And as this voltage reaches uh, about 375, 400 volt, it will kick. There is a very short pulse coming out of behavioral voltage source. We don't see it, it's so short that uh, even LTSPY doesn't display it, but certainly it activates the switch because at this point we see the current starting to flow. This is the red one. And also the voltage drops because now we have a drop on this uh, two volt. So there is a drop here. So this is where actually the switch is turned on. And then the current start to go up at one point, the behavioral source for the current is triggered because it passed the 0.5 amp. And then as the voltage revives again to the same value, okay, because it dropped and then it comes back, then we have the output of the other behavioral source for the voltage sensing, okay? And then it goes on and then the pulse is going down. At one point we go below the voltage of the trip and therefore this goes down, but there is still current. So the switch is still on. Okay, the switch is still on until it drops to uh, 0 0.5 is the current, until it drops to uh, 0.5 amp and then we get uh, the switch off. Okay, so it shows very nicely how this thing works. And now I'm coming to the model of the voltage surge generator. Okay, so basically it's just translating into empty spice with what we have seen before. We have here the network. We have a switch again. This is the turn on and off. And here th this is operated by a pulsar here. This is the capacitor which is being discharged into the shaping network and then we have here another switch so that i don't have a large resistor here i don't want to wait a long time between pulses so this switch uh, turns on in between the pulses so to very quickly uh, replenish the voltage across the capacitor and then we can uh, have another pulse going on so it can run continuously and here is what i see this is the voltage on the capacitor, in fact. So at the beginning, there's a delay here, so it's uh, still uh, about a thousand volt. And here, this is the output. This is where the switch is turned on. And here is the pulse. This is the actual the pulse coming out. This is now open circuit. And then, as I've said, after a while, uh, there is a recharging of the capacitor, and then we have another pulse, etc. So this is a general view. And then let's have a look inside. Now this is the rise time. And as you remember, we have 30% to 90% here. And this time here is about one microsecond. So when I multiply it by this factor for normalizing, I'm getting 
Well, it's a little bit longer than the 1.2 something that uh, the standard is calling for, but for the demonstration, of course, this is uh, okay. And then I have here the width of the pulse, which is uh, 50 microseconds. So this is the pulse of about 1.2 or 1.5, 50 as defined in the standard. And here is the shape of the current pulse in short circuit. We get to 500 amp. This is according to the standard, as a matter of fact. And again, the rise and width are very close to what is required. So now I'm combining the voltage surge generator to the spark gap model and see how these two work together for the given pulse, okay, for this particular pulse of uh, 1000 volt that I've shown just now. And here it is. So we see the voltage across the spark gap is rising at uh, 375 it'll kick and then it drops now we have here 20 volt and very small resistor so the voltage once it ignites the voltage drops to about 20 volts which is this voltage here at that point of course the current jumps and what i see here is the output of the DVDT, the derivative this is the derivative of this line. And again, this is a spurious due to these breaks. I have this spike, but the value that I'm interested in here is, is this value here just before it, uh, the breakdown. And it is like about uh, say uh, one volt or something like that, which correspond to a thousand amp per microsecond, quite a bit. So in fact, there is a need for correction here, if I like to be okay. I've not implemented this correction automatically. It can be done because we have the signal and what we have to do, we have to shift the level, but I haven't done it here. Whoever is interested, of course, can implement it. And I'll be happy to learn if you did this and how did it work. And here is the zoom out view. Now the scale is much, much different here. We had, this is like 200 nanosecond, and here we have 50 microseconds, okay? So we see now the full pulse. This is the current, okay? It's like a short circuit, as a matter of fact. And this is the voltage on the device. Here it kicked, okay? It went up, we don't see it because the scale of the scaling. We don't see the, the rise here but here it went up to about 375 and then it drops to 20. And this is again the derivative. Again, we don't see all the details because uh, during this time here, the derivative is zero. This is the operational range and uh, the scale is just uh, improper. And then as the current uh, goes down, of course, uh, the, there is a turn off and the voltage uh, will start rising and then eventually might go up again. So let me sort of wrap up this uh, presentation. I've shown how to develop a simple and very intuitive SPICE or LT-SPICE model for a spark gap and for a voltage surge generator according to the IEC standard for uh, voltage surge uh, immunity. And I've concentrated on this standard. You should of course take into account that the model that I've uh, developed for the uh, spark gap is kind of limited. Uh, many things are missing. First of all, the DVDT effect. I am not showing the glow, although it is really negligible because if the source feeding the spark gap has a low impedance, then the glow time is extremely short because you very quickly pass through it. And then I have a fixed arc voltage. This has to be a function of the current and also temperature. There isn't much information about this though. So even if you would like to do it or to correct for it, uh, it'll be difficult because of lack of information. Also the same thing for temperature effect and also aging because uh, once you have one breakdown and, uh, or a number of them, then of course the characteristic of the spark gap might change a little bit. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest. Thank you very much.